What is up, guys? We are live with the finals. Even though I haven't changed anything, it is the finals. And DBS Dad, Gabriel Alonzo, elite Patreon member. First finals appearance ever since playing, and he just started playing a few months ago. Versus the innovator, the creator of the meta that we have today. This man made it up himself. PPG local. Jonathan Rodriguez. Not Andrew Calderon. Not Andrew Calderon. Disregard the screen. <laughs> but how epic is this? Please, just, just tell me how insane. Like, can you make this stuff up? Nope. <laughs> it's so crazy to me. And this time... The innovator himself is playing against his own deck in the finals. And he can potentially win two huge PPG releases within a matter of two weekends. With his own like approach to the game, honestly. With his own approach to the game. How insane is that? I feel like this is this is the test. This is the exact matchup um, we've been waiting for the whole day. It's SS3 shoe control, which is a slightly more aggressive variant of the deck, versus Gary Alonso's tried and true uh, pure control um, defensive deck. And we're going to see what wins out if uh, Gohan and Flute, uh, basically looping defensive cards, or the, the shoes <laughs> make it out. Insane. This is so great of a matchup i cannot begin to imagine I mean, if if jonathan ends up uh winning this event people are going to be debating which vanilla is the strongest <laughs> which vanilla should we play foos i mean shoes should we play gotens should we play gokus like what is the vanilla we're going to see if shoe control can beat it over ss3 blue control uh dragon fist control let's call it um this was innovated by team ppg and gabriel alonzo here, innovating it and playing it today, seeing exactly how good this deck can be. So we'll see exactly how this starts off. Jonathan here with a shoe and a dimension trunks in the energy. Uh, dimension control is something that you don't want to see in the energy. Shoe is something that you want to see in the deck. So not the best start. And Jonathan not seeing an energy boost in Majin Buu or a time control Cronia. He is playing play sets of both in the main deck. So you can't imagine that's a good start. I mean, he's a huge fan of the one energy draw card um, cards and didn't get either of them. Until actually, it, you know, in a way, it could also be uh, on purpose because he expects uh, Gabriel to play Tapion and the Tapion could bounce uh, the Cronoa or Boo to the top of the deck. So it'd be, it could be a completely conscious uh, choice for him not to play them. Um, it's interesting to look at his hand right now. Maybe he just didn't get them at all, which is more likely, but inter an interesting uh, interaction between those cards, even on turn one of the game. So. So not much really going on. There's going to be a Tapion on the Tapion here. Uh, from what I've noticed, um, whoever Tapion's second really gets the benefit out of it. Um, you think so? Why is that? It, it's honestly because the Tapion hitting Tapion means that you took away a 15k from uh, your opponent's board. And in that way, every single time that 15k gets to land an attack on the opponent, it's you know, a, a 5k advantage as, as opposed to the person that uh, Tapion first only really got rid of a boo at most. Um, so Tapion second really uh, showing that it's beneficial in the matchup. Uh, obviously, going first is a, an extreme advantage. So, you know, just Tapion on the Tapion isn't going to alleviate that, but a little saving grace for Jonathan at least. So we're going to see these uh, 
tried and tested two mono blue decks in the final tells you how mono blue is so powerful right now there are many different combinations that you can go among with super saiyan 3 but mono blue seems just the most consistent as far as like hitting the energy correctly uh being able to just fluidly go through the motions uh very powerful tools at their disposal i mean blue having a self-awakened that's something that blue never had they never had gohans they never had uh intensifying power trunks they never had you know kabas like they were always really, uh, and, and, and it's, it's crazy how this deck is only relying on Tapion. And I mean, you see it like so a, much. It's not a stretch to say that Tapion is the single determining factor on people building Mono Blue to begin with. I think it's just such a consistent uh, turn one, turn two. Uh, it's almost the same every single game. So, and, and, and you saw Andrew Calderon uh, last match wasn't able to awaken because his awakening mechanic was a, a little bit less consistent. Um, than the mono blue deck so just tapion having been released is part of the reason why it's the deck is so powerful you're right result of training how, how can i forget result of training days <laughs> god i hated that card so much uh, i'm not gonna get into i that saw that card less than i see ta uh, that uh, than i see David <laughs> on now like that card was just elusive elusive you couldn't get me to play that card in my entire life, so... Jesus <laughs> Christ. No, I, I, I jammed that card. I loved it, and I hated it. It was just... <laughs> the most insane love-hate relationship you can possibly and give really it also, imagine. Um, having a Jodger Obi on board, if that Jodger Obi sticks around um, for the following turns, he could alleviate some of the pressure that um, Jonathan is applying. And Jonathan, honestly, not with those... Uh, like it's an uncharacteristic opening um that he doesn't have that many 15ks yet and well this is this is the the turn this is the turn that if he goes vegeta into trunks uh, he gets rewarded for that engine and there you go that's the first step uh towards summoning a lot of 15ks this turn and only a chronal to follow it up so not as ideal as he would have wanted it to but definitely not as bad as it could have been and i think this jodger obi is just going to hold the ground or uh, Jonathan basically saying, okay, if you want to cash in and judge your over, you have to do it right now. And most of my better bombs are going to be happening later on in the game. So Gabriel he's going to take the bait. Yeah. Uh, and I don't know if that's correct there because that Vegeta was only attacking for 20K. It didn't really. And it's something that drew a card for Jonathan and untapped an energy. So it, it was something that, you know, it didn't use the ability, which Jonathan could have also used the ability, but you don't want to go down to two there or, or no, one. It, sure. You don't want to go down to two. Uh, with the Vegeta ability just to pop a blocker to just attack into a negate, you know That Vegeta is just there to apply pressure later in the game Maybe you can get that sneak attack in if, if you count like three negates in your opponent's yard uh, yeah. And you can probably to get into the, the, in there, but the, the card that Gabriel is really concerned about is Beerus So utilizing that Jodorobi on that turn to get rid of the the four draw Vegeta that already replaced himself a little bit of, of a blunder there because now if Jonathan has that Beerus, Gabriel has no counterplay to it. Um, so we'll see how the game resolves from this point. And it's also something to say that once Dragon Fist uh, start coming down uh, from Gabriel's side of the board, you can just deal with that Vegeta. It's you know it's not applying that much pressure. So interesting choice. Um, from uh, Gabriel's side, and we'll see if he gets paid off for making that exchange. And this is a clear sign that Gabriel is struggling a little bit with um, bombs at this point, getting back his draw cards just to see if he can get, um, you know, any options uh, for himself. Ideally, he wants to see a pickle on this turn, alleviate some of the 15k pressure that his opponent is doing, uh, play a few boos to mitigate the Gohan and Tapion attacks and we're gonna see if he has a Piccolo here it would not be the worst card it would probably be the best card for him aside from a Beerus that he just didn't have at the time and he hasn't swung with leader yet so I uh, want to see that maybe I would have wanted to see the leader attack before the boo play just in case but not gonna punish him uh, too much I'm sure and <laughs> Gabriel has three dragon fists in his hand so that, that's going to be insane if he gets 
the second one and the third one, obviously, it's just going to be overkill at that point. But if you know, if he gets to develop his late game, he's a sure favorite to win. I'm just surprised that he has so many in his hand. No, yeah, the Dragon Fist, mandatory four of. We told him uh, it was just like you play four and uh, you, you watch the miracles happen. Uh, that card will uh, eventually just uh, win you the entire game and very powerful card here for Gabriel um, If he sticks one that second one cascades into a second one uh, The first one cascades into the second one and the second one cascades into a third one and before you know it You're netting six energy every turn. Hey <laughs> and summoning a dragon fizz on top of a dragon fizz. Exactly and you're pressuring your opponent with 25k in in the face so um. <laughs> Very, very powerful card, and it's something that's definitely uh, mirror breaking and something that can put a lot of pressure onto just regular decks. We're gonna see the significance of it in this matchup though, because it is a much faster matchup than a traditional uh, mono blue deck. That benefited Fu acting like a Piccolo. Gabriel didn't find one this turn, but at least he was able to deal with um, the Gohan that could have gotten fluted back to Jonathan's hand later on in the game, so. Mitigating a little bit of the pressure, as I said before, and it's just stabilizing the board um, to summon those Dragon Fists, because nothing that Jonathan can do can honestly match up to those. Um, that, that's just part of his deck, deck choice. He chose to be a little more aggressive with the trunks that he hasn't gotten this game, and uh, Gabriel going a little bit bigger with the Dragon Fists. Um, probably going to get rewarded this game one. If we're thinking about comboing here, he's going to combo up to 35k. It's just exchanging resources, honestly, just using his mana now instead of later. So, not much else to say there. I think in that case, I probably would have just taken the two as crazy as it seems. No, I Because uh, Gabriel, I feel like Gabriel like overcommitted a little bit on that food. I, I, I completely agree if your opponent um, commits you know 15 20k worth of resources to you taking an attack that attack isn't gonna kill you so you might as well just take it get a little bit of card advantage being being at two might seem scary but in these merry matches it's not really about um, whether the opponent goes all in on you because there's so much uh, playability with sensu beans 1ks a bunch of super combos so it's very difficult to just all in um, this format, I believe, so it's just taking it there wouldn't have been that big a deal. Um, but both players have been shown to conserve their lives. We've seen Gabriel in certain situations really value his life a lot, and Jonathan doing the same. So these players just being defensive, and it's been working out. I fully expect Jonathan to have a Beerus this turn. So he's just attacking just to see what Gabriel does um, before he commits to anything and if he's doing this I suspect a sense of being might come out because Trunks is definitely not as powerful of a play as Beerus so and he has one in hand so he's just op opting to do this play um, it's an interesting where his mentality is maybe he he thinks that doing uh, multiple attacks and forcing Gabriel to have sense of being might be the better option uh, moving forward but it, you know if, if that Beerus doesn't come down this turn it's uh, very debatable like why, why it didn't Deathscape uh, can you hear us uh, I just want to make sure that we are we are you said you couldn't hear anything maybe turn the audio up I want to thank everybody in chat. There's almost 200, almost 200. people. Yeah, almost 200. Thank you guys again for showing uh, so, so much support. I, I don't even have words for it. Uh, appreciate everybody who tuned into the stream. It's been a pretty long one. I think we've been on for about almost 12 hours now. Wow. So uh, a pretty long day. Uh, we had 50 plus players in today's event. We had six rounds of Swiss. We had a top eight that was stacked with some of the best players in Florida. We had people from all over the state uh, travel down. We had over 100 players in the store today between five different games. A uh, very wonderful day. Uh, really appreciate the love and support for everyone who came out and the people that weren't able to come out because you probably don't live anywhere in the area. <laughs> then thank you guys for tuning in because it's been a, a magical time, fantastic time. Remember, guys, please 
make sure you get that subscription on Twitch um, when we start doing regionals for Bandai these streams are gonna look insane they're gonna be on this channel but it, everything's gonna look fantastic we're gonna get some really nice animations out there we got some really nice uh, streaming equipment Thank, uh, thanks to all our patron subscribers we almost hit our uh, our first goal of a thousand dollars so fantastic that's going to go into dslr's camcorders it's going to go into the whole shebang mm -hmm. to make this uh, streaming on the road for bandai so much nicer so uh, appreciate every single one of you uh even if you don't you know um, subscribe with any type of money at least you you do have access to a free uh prime sub just by being a, a amazon affiliate so make sure you guys use that prime sub and subscribe today uh, there's going to be a lot of cool things that we're going to be doing for subscribers. We're going to be doing some giveaways at the Otakon Regional. We're going to go wild. So <laughs> it, it's not going to be like any stream. You're going to be like, where did this stream come from? And it's going to be insane. So I guarantee you will not regret it. Thank you guys again so much for the support. Really love it. And nearly at, uh, saludos a Puerto Rico también. <laughs> hey, what's up, man? Support from Puerto Rico. You guys always show us the most love. Really appreciate it. Can't <laughs> wait for the regionals in Puerto Rico. I told Josue I'd, I'd try to make it out there. I really want to make it out there with uh, maybe Peter or uh, Dusty and stuff like that. Uh, hopefully this regional season doesn't take too much of a toll on us. Bandai's got us working the whole East Coast. Wow. So it's going to be uh, a very, very cool, very, very uh, exciting journey. I'm kind of nervous myself, uh, but we have a fantastic team. So I, I know uh, that there should be nothing to worry about, but uh, we hold ourselves to a very high standard and we're going to hold ourselves to a very, very high standard when representing Bandai. So we want to make sure we bring you guys the utmost quality in tournament organization and presentation. So I, I know our team and Dusty's going to do a great job of that. So uh, stay tuned, guys, because a lot of big things are coming. Not as big as this beer is, though. 20 strike, <laughs> double strike, and it's going to be eating some cards from Gabriel. He's going to immediately throw that Dragon Fist, and that's another reason why we play this Dragon Fist. Yeah, sometimes it's great on board, but sometimes it's just great fodder to Beerus. Beerus uh, is a hungry dude. He likes to eat <laughs> multiple cards, but sometimes we just got to put him on the die with the Dragon Fist. Uh, Beerus putting the team on his back every single time I see him on board, and Dragon Fist just a little bit of mitigating that effect. Um, more options in the sideboard with the Zamasu um, shown the last round. Hopefully Gabriel uh, plays that as well in games two and three, but for now, Beerus putting in the work. And this is the turn, the big turn, turn uh, five with six energy. Did he, did he not energy? I don't think he entered you. Hmm. It's weird. So Gabriel prioritizing on destroying the cards on the field right now. Uh, Jonathan protecting them as is customary in these mirror matches and I don't mm, I'm, not, I'm not exactly sure why Gabriel still has five energy hmm. well in any case see what Gabriel wants to do here If I'm not mistaken, he started the turn with five energy. He might have just uh, not energy before attacking with the leader, I think is what happened. I'm not significant blunder if that's the case. Maybe he has six energy, just it, they're hidden. I'm not exactly sure. Huh. Maybe Gabriel realizing it now? Mm, yeah. I I think he just skipped his charge phrase. Or did uh, one of his energy go into the discard pile? Not 
entirely too sure. They're, they're discussing it right now. They're, they're probably going to um, confirm now um, just to see. And we'll get that sorted out really quickly. Yeah, so it does look like uh, Gabriel did mischarge, unfortunately. Fatigue setting in here. This is their 12th hour of playing Dragon Ball Super. Can you believe that? Yeah, definitely. Just a, yeah, just a simple mistake. That's all it is. Um, that's all you can say about it. A tragedy considering his hand is three Dragon Fists. <laughs> oh my god. That's a little rough. Um, he has to find an answer for the Beerus exactly right now in this draw, or that's it. That's game. I think if he doesn't, if he doesn't do it, so we're gonna see what happens from this point. Uh, going to send him back tremendously. I agree with that, and I I just don't think he has a targeted removal for the Beerus. Um, it was going to be that the Dragon Fist, but. Now it can't come down. This Quick shout out to uh, our our brand new patrons. One, we had a, an existing patron actually uh, upgrade their pledge Move to ten dollars. So right. thank you, uh, appreciate it. Um, thankfully, you got enough from the five dollars sub, and now you're gonna see so much more on the ten dollars sub for sure. And then uh, Brian, so it's Brian and Anthony. Shout outs to you guys if you guys are watching the stream. You probably are. <laughs> uh, really appre appreciate your support. Um, closer and closer to that goal. I think we might be hitting that very, very soon. Um, going to be really exciting. And like I said, we're going to be working towards even bigger goals in the future. So um, remember, guys, those deck lists will be available tonight. We're already having them scanned up, and they will be posted on the Patreon as soon as this event finishes. Uh, it's going to be early access, okay? It's not going to be like, oh, man. Uh, I have to pay for these deck lists. No, uh, you got to see it as you're going to get all access to all PPG content. We have a lot of personal one-on-one -on -one videos. We always have a lot of deck techs. We always have some secret decks that we don't feel comfortable putting on YouTube on there. So you get some exclusive content on there. Articles. Um, yeah, articles. Uh, articles that's going to come up uh, very soon, actually. We should be posted by, like, Monday, Tuesday, right before GenCon to get you prepped. Uh, I think that's going to be a very good uh, way to go into GenCon if you guys are going. Um, and then you'll get early access. Like I said, those decklist will be posted publicly soon uh but we will not post them until actually after gengon because we do have a lot of players that are going to gengon but because of our patreon subscribers we're willing to give that important information out uh to you guys early so super scoop and gen con gen con gen con who cares we, we got <laughs> we got a bunch of people in the chat just throwing around the f just Paying the respects yeah. for what just seems to be a little uh, a bit tragic uh, it's honestly, a little mishap yeah yeah it's a it's a pretty but Gabriel will look back and he will be like, this is why this happened. It's not because he got, you know, because uh, he got outplayed or did something else. It's simple. It's something as simple as charging an energy, you know. So hopefully the only thing they can do now is not let the uh, not let it get to him. Mm -hmm. And he really can't just uh, let the, you know, he can't get tilted by it. You know, yeah. he, that, that's the most important don't let it thing. If it, again, if it lets, yeah, don't let it happen to you again. And just look forward and just look and uh, look at the next game as if it's game one, you know, just sit there and just be like, okay. <coughs> that, now that's, that's a good point, too. It's uh, basically saying, okay, I might lose uh, game one from this position, but you still have two more. All he has to do is 2 0. He was in almost complete, uh, like, firm position of this game, and um, he could just do that again, games two and three. And I think his sideboard allows him to have a little bit of a better time with what's going on in Jonathan's deck, so it, it, he's not out of it yet, just not let uh, his uh, mishap this game affect him. <laughs> That's an expensive algorithm. 
No, but we will be posting not just top eight deck lists. We'll be posting everybody's deck list. So you'll even get the guy that got 50th place. I know you guys are really looking for that deck list. Trust me. There's no way for you to get it. I, I, I guarantee it. 50th place. It, yeah, no, he might have just been unlucky. I'm pretty sure he was a genius. He had the perfect meta call. Uh, he just he just happened to get 50th because he loves going 0 and 6. Like the man will go it's nothing but 0 and 6. So <laughs> trust me. Yo, you have a Patrick Hope in the emo, emo? Jesus Christ, I am so jealous. That's phenomenal. That's phenomenal. That is legendary. Guys, by the way, you will be getting Peter Katani emotes very soon. They're oh, already wow. getting worked on. Oh, so mm -hmm. if you want to, if you want a Peter Katani emote, I don't know how you get one of those, but I'm pretty sure you have to subscribe. So just subscribe. Just trust me. Use your free Prime sub. If you use this somewhere else, shame on you. But you can still subscribe to us. I appreciate it, cause we only got five subscribers. We're kind of like scrubs on this, but we're gonna get better. I trust. Trust me. Oh my God! Look at this guy spamming Danny hype emotes. You're messing up, cause you're not gonna have Peter Katani emotes. And I'm going to laugh <laughs> because he's the goat. <laughs> yeah. Peter Katani, you know, yes. <laughs> yes, boy. Who goes on six? <laughs> Only the the masterminds of masterminds. You know how much tenacity you need to go on six? Does anybody still have those Beerus Hakai uh, KTM emotes? Spam those. I haven't seen those in a while. Damn, there's some pretty cool emotes. And yeah, we're just having a little fun in chat here. Obviously, um, we love one, interacting with the chat. Game one will <laughs> conclude soon as well. And I'm looking forward to game two and three, seeing how uh, these sideboards interact with each other. A mono blue ha being so versatile, having so many options, um, should be interesting to see. I don't think we went over much of a game plan with the uh, sideboarding for this stack particularly so I, i'm interested to see how gabriel goes over uh side new, really? yeah yeah because we i mean we'd given him a game plan for you know like three different matchups but not this one so yeah we need a machado emote <laughs> stop with all this weak weak sauce Ooh, beers and kai's in there Oof. that one looks nice Nice. Uh, I love it, guys. I love the enthusiasm in the chat. Always love interacting with you guys. It is the funnest time. Man, so... Uh, do you think Gabriel can still pull it out here? Uh, short answer, no. <laughs> <laughs> There's two <laughs> beers on Jonathan's side. Jeez. Uh, beers on top. This is this just, just tragic. It was the worst possible time. But... We're looking forward to game two and three. That's the important part. And Gabriel should be thinking the same thing. He should, he should not pay any mind to what happened this game. Um, unfortunate, but not the end of the road yet. He still has two games to win out. Nobody was playing uh, Lord Slug today, but people were playing uh, Namekians with Super Saiyan 3 leader, though. And it looked really good. I mean, uh, Fernando, yeah. I think we need to actually look at that deck. I'm, I'm like, are so serious. Uh, they're, they're actually pretty powerful. No, it's, it's so insane. Like, they have everything. I, I feel like uh, that's definitely something that we need to look into. But, uh, yeah, that's a really good deck that you're going to be able to access, too, because he didn't make top 8, and he was on stream like once, so... Uh, there's a lot of good decks that just didn't make the top uh, top cut. Shout out to another patron. No way, actually, that's the same one. I lied. I'm trying to hype. But there could be a new one. But there could be a new one, and it could be you. You can get a shout out right now, live, Pro Play Games, in front of 200, almost 200 viewers. But no, seriously, guys, thank you. Y'all are the best. Gabe doing as much as possible here. Um, went for the kill there, got Wee's Corrigion, but that was his shot. He, he had to um, pull back from the bad position that he was in, trying to go for an all-in while Jonathan's Beers were... What did he bounce back? Tapped out. Um, 
He doesn't. He doesn't have to bounce anything if he doesn't want to. It's uh, up to one, so maybe. I mean, yeah, I don't see any reason why he wouldn't bounce back a beers, right? You're right. <laughs> maybe the uh, the tilt and the fatigue is really getting to him, and I feel like this game he already knows is out of the bag. But I don't think Gabe has the. Uh, I don't think he's the type to just goop before the game's over. No, I mean, he's showing a lot of tenacity here. No, Maybe he gets to see a few other cards that That's very Jonathan true. is playing. Um, you know, Jonathan really doesn't have to play a single card left, but he could, and Gabriel could just get a little bit more information. So, uh, obviously, no reason to concede. That's a very good point. Uh, playing out the game a little bit past whether you already know the game is done or not, um, especially when there's... Uh, Especially when there's no time. Yeah, there's no time. You, you so get, uh, yeah, yeah, like no finals game I don't think is ever tied, uh, timed, but uh, it just gives you more information. It gives you a little bit more information about the matchup. Maybe you see a, a special tech card that they comboed with by mistake because they went all in. You know, there's a lot of different things that can be happening, so that's why you normally want to play it out to the end. There are specific times that you do want to scoop it up, though. Like you, you do, save time. yeah, because you want to save time. That's that's generally and going into the regional season when we start adopting this policy, this new policy of when time is up, the game is over. Oh, wow. Then uh, you really want to. Uh, time is going to be a thing, you know. Uh, even though that wasn't there wasn't too many games in in, in uh, time today even, uh, when even we were the going Blue around. Even Blue Decks are just playing so fast. Even Blue Decks are playing pretty fast, yeah. I mean, they can get long, long and grindy, to be honest. So if it goes into a game three, uh, I want to say the percentage of going into time might be somewhere around like 30, you know, 25, 30%, which is kind of high. But um, I, I think two skilled mono blue players will make uh, sure. Yeah, 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 exactly. Sideboard, I, I think Gabriel's just taking a moment to uh, recompose here. Um, definitely just. Sticking to the game plan that he's been given and going to do his best. He, he's played this matchup probably a couple of times today, so he knows exactly what he has to do for game two and three. Nothing has changed. Um, what, what happened in game one stays in game one, and he just has to move forward from here and just uh, keep his mind in the game. No, definitely, I agree. If if Gabe um, makes that uh, energy, uh, bounces back the beers, the first beers that Jonathan had in that game, establishes a, a 25k and start go, uh, starts going uh, at Jonathan's life, um, and then you know sets up, uh, for example, when he untaps the two energy, sets up uh, Jajarobi, uh sets up you know more booze, more defensive cards, things like that. Just keeps the energy open. And then eventually has a second Dragon Fist coming down, and Jonathan can't really do anything about that. Um, definitely, Gabriel Alonso would have been in a much better position in that game. So, and and that's part of it. Basically, just um, keep the head in the game and have a game two happen the exact same way, except uh, get that six energy and get the Dragon Fist down. Um, nothing has changed. It's just you know applying what you learn from game one. Just Winning out game two and three. And we said it's going to be interesting to see also uh, a, a huge card in uh, the previous blue matchups was a Shroud and Mystery Foo. That, that card completely changed the dynamic of the game, and having negates be irrelevant made taking um, early uh, 15k hits from something like Gohan or Tapion made it a, a, a lot more difficult. So interesting to see how Fu changes this matchup moving forward maybe, and, and putting a lot more priority into um, Sensor Bean, for example, things like that. So.
All right, guys, before we start this game, we're going to play a quick video. If you guys haven't seen it before, this is for our upcoming regionals. Super excited for it. Check it out. So we're back to the game. Hope you guys enjoyed that teaser. Uh, it is that is pretty much the upcoming schedule for PBG. If you go to pbgeventmanagement.com, you can see all the upcoming regionals for Bandai in the East Coast. We are the East Coast uh, organizer for Bandai for all these regionals, so we'll be making sure to provide all the coverage and all of the best event organization that we possibly can. We have a wonderful staff, uh, wonderful judges. And we can't wait to start hosting uh, events for Bandai uh, going forward for this season. Starting off with Otakon. Uh, that's about like two weeks away. I think it's like one week after Gen Con. So if you're not going to Gen Con and you are in the East Coast. Gen Con, sorry. If you're not going to Gen Con and you're in the East Coast. Uh, make sure you guys stop by Washington, D.C. That is a Dragon Ball Tour stop. It's one of the seven exclusive Dragon Ball Tour stops. Um that uh that bandai is actually putting on so not only are you going to be able to get that exclusive promo but you're going to be able to actually um get the uh play the dragon ball heroes arcade machine one and then two you can actually get the exclusive like lanyard bag fan etc etc you're gonna be able to see a lot of cool dragon ball super figurines and stuff like that but this is the only regional at a con other than gen con so there's gonna be gen con which is a regional slash con and then we have otakon which is gonna be a dragon ball tour slash con slash regional so plenty of things to do 100 percent uh and it is gonna be a weekend by the way so we're gonna have uh friday starter limited battles where you can play with starter decks um saturday which you're going to actually have uh, the regional competition, the main regional competition. And then on Sunday, we're going to do team wars. We're going to do team battles. It's only going to be one team battles to see who the best team is. Uh, KTM starting a lot of beef with us, trying to see if uh, they can take the spotlight. But uh, we know a little bit better. We have, uh, we're going to make sure our guys defend that title as the best team in the world um, in Dragon Ball Super. And it's going to be really exciting. We're going to stream those all. Uh, to you guys live so if you guys can't make it out to those events don't worry we'll be putting on a show through this channel right here we'll be streaming every single uh, piece of coverage from those regionals so that you can actually stay updated with us so um, a shout out to everyone who's going to be there uh, hopefully you guys can tune in for those of you who won't be there it's going to be really cool it's going to be kicking off with Otakon then we go and we visit beautiful Richmond Virginia uh, September 8th I believe and then we go and hit a little bit south in Atlanta, Georgia. And I believe we're there uh, the last week in September, which is, I think, September 28th. And then uh, we go all the way down to the deep, deep south. We're hitting our hometown as we wrap up the regional season, last regional of the season, all the way in Orlando, Florida. So uh, for all of you guys from Orlando natives. I know you'll be there because you're a fiend for all Orlando events, but um, it's going to be really exciting. It's going to be in our home state. It's going to be the final regional of the season, so we're going to be able to uh, end it off with a, with a bang. I can't wait. So uh, for more info about upcoming regionals, please visit ppgeventmanagement.com and pre-register today. It's going to be a good one. Oh, yeah, 100%. Once... Uh, once you seven, uh, once the ultimate box comes out, we're gonna start making videos. Probably after Gen Con, uh, because we will be busy with Gen Con stuff, like prepping and stuff like that. And we get the ultimate box like on Monday, yeah. um, in a few days. Uh, we're probably not gonna make any decks until yeah, after Gen Con. We don't really want to focus on cards that will be affecting the next format. We want to focus a lot on helping our players develop uh, this format as much as possible until Gen Con, which is the big event. For this format before that box comes out so definitely a lot of our priority goes into that and then after that you'll be seeing a lot of uh, brand new cards in our content um, but for now if you're 
interesting interested in doing well again con just going there and if you're not if you just want to know the format know as much as possible about dbs uh beginner uh getting better again or an experienced player that uh, just wants to be in the loop I'll definitely check out our patreon and all the decks that we'll be posting there for today's event and the uh coming weeks with uh gen con so. Yeah, for those of you who um, have had the experience of being at a Dragon Ball tour, I think there's only been one Dragon Ball tour so far. And that was at uh, Gen Con. I mean, not Gen Con. Fucking. Um, San Diego Comic Con. There we go. San Diego Comic Con was the only Dragon Ball tour so far, and I think Otakon's the second one. So, I don't think um, Gen Con has one. I could be wrong. There's only seven Dragon Ball Tour stops, so. See here, Jonathan just one game away from closing the deal. He got a pretty good opening. Um, got his, con his uh, ideal turn four, unlike in game one. And Gabriel a little bit in the back foot, but again, it's just all about um, protecting his life and also uh, controlling the board so that he can establish Dragon Fist coming into the game. I, I don't exactly no um unless he flipped it no so he didn't flip him off of the starting mana so he just managed a bunch of dragon fists and those are the most important card in, in the matchup and i wanted to see 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 him be a little less uh just wasteful with those in the energy maybe one but both is a bit strange so but we'll, we'll see how things go from here um, prioritizing right now the, that leader uh, attack is going to go at the shoe almost certainly um, just forcing more cards out of Jonathan um, the piccolo effect was used to kill the Vegeta which is pretty profitable for Gabriel honestly it hit a, a very good target there um, and going into uh, Jonathan's turn obviously it's going to be that Beerus again we, we, we know for sure, if he has it, he's going to uh, play it on that turn. And Jonathan, ready and waiting with uh, Mafuba in his hand, so even the future Dragon Fist um, might not be enough. So the, the matchup might actually turn into, as we saw in the previous match, uh, a, a Fu battle. And whoever gets the first Fu might have a significant advantage moving forward. So we'll see if Gabriel can uh, dig through his deck and get a few copies of that. Um, uh, it might come down to that after he sees the Mafuba um, hitting his Dragon Fist, you know, he, he might shift toward that plan, so. Um, but we'll see how this develops. And Jonathan actually, with Dragon Fist of his own, and in his aggressive strategy, he, he plays them as well. Um, we saw them come to effect in, I believe, his winning in match, and now here as well. So... We'll see how effective that is. I mean, uh, they're good for Gabriel, and they're probably good for Jonathan, too. So. Just debating his options here. Um, wants to take it slow. Um, no reason not to think about every exact play. I mean, this is down the stretch. He has to win. Uh, two games in a row, so just think things through. Now nah, there's no um, harm done in doing so. Now, You can see uh, turn five uh, always a really complex turn um, for the mono blue deck. Uh, a lot of pause even from these experienced players. Uh, like it, it's not always just as simple as slam bears on the table. Even if he had it, um, I'm not, I haven't seen his hand. Not, I'm not actually sure if he does, but it it could be you know other plays like another piccolo plus a Cronoa, just something a little bit more defensive. It could be um, you know. 
Mm. Just any amount of plays, really. Um, did he use Piccolo ability yet? He did. He, he did. did. Okay. He uh, ended up killing a Vegito with it. Alright, so I wonder if he actually has a Beerus play here. He, you see him with the Zamasu here. You see him with the uh, Dragon the Fist. The Zamasu is going to be great if he does play it on 6. Wow, and missing pass. a turn 5 play. That's I believe. Hard. I hope Gabriel sat it in Beerus's. And I'll be honest with you. It's okay. It, it, it sounds terrible to just skip your turn 5, but it's the weakest turn um, if you don't have a Beerus for the blue deck. So, it's acceptable in terms that he's not facing down that much pressure um definitely gonna feel the impact of passing turn there but it's not the end of the world just quite yet he just has to hope that his six drops are gonna start mitigating some of uh, jonathan's advantages here um and again we, we see jonathan prioritizing this aggressive play he's gonna a uh, go trunks search out a uh, shoe second one on the table this one's gonna have crit until the end of the turn and then he's gonna attack with the shoe put a little bit of pressure by sensu beaning um that attack trying to see if gabriel uh takes it or not um he probably get a super combo out of him at least and then after he does so he can uh beers alternatively um he could just Vegeta and untap an energy off of that as well and then summon something like a Cronoa or another Boo. So a lot of options here for Jonathan and playing all these uh, smaller to the ground cards are really help helping him in this matchup. Um, but we see him prepare for next turn with a Dragon Fist and a Banished Foo. So he just has everything in it, you know. He might just be poised to take this tournament would not be a surprise at all considering how well he's done in the last few weeks I think Peter's gonna have to share his fan base with <laughs> Jonathan a little bit yeah Jonathan uh, taking almost every PVG event he's played now so oh, okay. <laughs> yeah every yeah he's played in only two and Long behold, about to take both of them. Gabriel not out of it yet. He's going to go into turn six first. He's going to have the first impactful turn, and we'll see if he can mitigate some of these shoes. <laughs> Looking quite difficult, though. In the face of all this pressure, um, and it's gonna be interesting. Does he does he want to go for Zamasu here, or does he want to go for Dragon Fist? Dragon Fist obviously gets rid of the Vegeta that's uh, currently in Jonathan's side, but Zamasu, um, an unkillable threat uh, that it's going to attack for 25k every single turn and can't get and, and allows Gabriel to have cushion against Beerus, which. Jonathan hasn't played yet, but might start too soon, so an in interesting um, set of choices that Gabriel has available to him right now. Obviously turn 6 being the most elaborate turn for the pure blue control deck. Yeah, he's got a lot of fancy things he could do on turn 6 here. He can play a Dragon Fist, he can play as a Masu. Want to see a charge, want to see attack with leader at the tapped shoe, and then proceed from there. Just uh, go through the motions mechanically and just, oh, oh, you know, make the obvious place first. And then, depending on what your opponent does, think about what you, you, you should do. Have the most information possible. Definitely uh, process is rewarded. <laughs> so, uh, taking a long time deciding what exactly does does he need the least uh, from the hand that he has right now um, it might be a difficult charge simply because he's deciding you know what bomb do I need the least uh, can I mana this is a masu can I is the game gonna come down to this foo is is the game about uh, dragon fist like always um, tough choice seeing as he has all of those in his hand and 
you know, anything could happen from this position. There's an argument to um, Manning just as a Muslim trying to go all in with the Fu. Um, it's currently in his hand. I mean, we saw him do it. Uh, it's a great success the last game, so, or last match, so... Jonathan actually counting Gabriel's yard, which is actually a pretty interesting thing to do. Yeah, just making sure that he know, uh, Jonathan knows he knows this format. He um, helped create some of the format so far with uh, some of his own unique takes on the mono blue archetype. And um, just keeping in mind that uh, a card like Fu, either a scientist Fu or a shard and mystery Fu, could come down uh, from Gabriel's side at any moment. So just being conscious about that. Um, Reading the discard pile, making sure that he knows all his opponent's options and can formulate a plan accordingly, um, moving into his own turn and just focusing on surviving this turn, really. Um, so, we'll see. You can tell maybe Gabriel is a little bit indecisive um, on what to play, maybe. Yeah. Does he have access to Zamasu and Dragon Fist, or does he, he only he has have access? He has Dragon Fist, Zamasu, and uh, Fu. Shredder Mystery Fu, yeah, so just a lot to think about. He's going with the shoe. That does the automatic play for sure, and Jonathan responding, throwing away the chrono, just getting the mechanics out of the way and then proceeding from there. I kind of want this Piccolo to go to the life simply because it has critical. Yes. Um, it's just a little. Oh, and Still gets bounced back by a 10k. So. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> so Gabriel choosing to go with a Piccolo here for this turn. I don't know if I like it. Uh, actually, I, what, what I think is happening is he's setting up, um, essentially unkillable threats because those Piccolos have barrier and he. I, he might go for the Fu ending. Um, he's come to the conclusion that maybe that's the only way um, he can, you know, try to squeeze out a victory in this game. And it, it makes sense in the sense that he can do this simply because. Oh, wow, and Mafuba Ooh, takes over. Oh, and Mafuba takes over Piccolo here. A little bit unexpected um, of a play from Jonathan, considering that um, he has to deal with a lot of cards like Dragon Fist, but. A little bit of a missed up again from Gabriel. He could have used the Piccolo effect to um, deal with the untapped shoe and then uh, attack into the Mafuba. Um, he could have also completely expected Mafuba not to be used on his Piccolo, considering it's not one of his heavy hitters. Um, but seeing as his entire turn was used for um, that Piccolo, it's not that bad from Jonathan to use Mafuba in that way and and. That just leads me to believe that Jonathan sees himself in the position of power, sees that he wants the game to end in the next couple of turns, and he's making everything uh, line up in that way, uh, moving of Dragon Fist to the forefront of his hand. He's just going to slam that card on the table before Gabriel Alonso gets to play one of his significant bombs, and I think this might be the beginning of the end for Gabriel here. Oh. And a Dragon Fist here for Jonathan, and that's not what you want to see as Gabriel. Yeah, Gabriel's board just completely empty, and that um, play that he made toward the Shredder Mystery Food just getting completely countered here by Jonathan, who seems to just be in complete control um, of the game. So. Gabriel having a little bit of a struggle recovering from that game one. Um, you can tell in his body language here that yeah. he's, he's he's quite... Maybe he's not playing as tight as he was before. And, you know, lost a little bit. Of this is a very grindy deck. This yeah. is a deck that, after playing Dragon Ball for 12 hours, can really, really take its toll on you. Especially because you need to analyze so many different, like, routes. It is a control deck, so it's very reactive, you know. Like, it's a deck that does not play itself, really. Uh, you need to know when to combo, what to look out for, what your opponent's deck can do, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm sure, um, I'm sure that's just all things that are running through Gabe's mind uh, throughout the day, and uh, I'm sure it's taking its toll at this point. And here, through the Zen the Sensu Bean, um, 
Jonathan doesn't have a flute, he might just want to combo that trunks in just to get a little bit of value out of it. Um, and he's also uh, throwing in a piccolo. Interestingly enough. Let's see what Gabriel wants to do in this situation. Um, a double striker uh, could beat him at this stage of the game. Um, maybe he's trying to force Gabriel to play around that. Um, for Gabriel could just take it. Uh, another difficult choice for him to make, of course. Just want to give a small shout out. Thank you to all 44 patrons for making us hit our first goal. $1,000 in less than a month. Super excited. Thank you guys so much again. Um, really can't say enough. This has been fantastic. Uh, the content that we're putting out here, we never thought we'd be able to put out because we really didn't want to uh, give this information to just anyone. You know, we wanted to give it to people that actually cared to get better in the game and actually wanted to take the information and use it to just you know start seeing success in the in the, in the local scene and the in the large scale scene. And you see it firsthand with Gabriel Alonso. He's reaped the benefits of the uh, elite tier. And, you know, it's just something that eventually you work at it, you work at it, and, uh, you, you know, results will show, just like with anything in life. So, uh, thank you again. Super humble. Yeah, the event today had uh, one of the storm decks making it to the top eight, piloted by none other than Alejandro Mena. So very interesting. Uh, if you guys want to check out that ag aggro list, um, it will be released in the deck list today. A heavy consideration for Genkan at this point. So. Here, Gabriel Alonso still fighting, still um, trying to get through this turn. Yeah, shout out to you, CJ. Yeah, it was you. You made it. You broke. You broke the barrier. <laughs> We're at a thousand dollars and eight cent and eight dollars. Sorry, a thousand dollars and eight. Oh, a thousand eight. Is that what you call it? Yeah, a thousand eight dollars. There you go. So CJ, it just sounds you, so weird. You made it happen. You made it happen. All you. 100% of that work. <laughs> Nobody else. <laughs> Not the first major. Yeah, the other 43. Uh <laughs> Insignificant. Just kidding. We love you all, guys. You guys are all great. And, uh, man, I just feel for Gabriel so much. Like, I've been in those shoes before where I get fatigued and I get tilted. That, that and then I get frustrated. Yeah. Game Most one took his toll a lot more. Now, this is a, a very strategic game, but... Um, yeah, some of it's variants, but a lot of it is just uh, just mental, like, just mind games sometimes, or yeah. just, like, being like, in the right mindset. With Andrew, too. Yeah. I guess it's not 100% about, you know, what happens with the cards at the table, um, you know, just mechanically. There, there is a lot of human element, and, you know, what, how can you make your opponent uh, make mistakes? What, what can you, uh, how can you lead your opponent into certain play patterns? Etc. So definitely a lot of interaction between players, and we've seen that with Andrew Calderon in the previous round, and uh, we're seeing it kind of now here with Jonathan, just knowing exactly. It feels like he just knows exactly what he wants to do every single turn, and he he's been like this since even two weeks ago when he won the release event. He, uh, he's just so adept at this mono blue strategy, being one of the forefathers of it at this point. And another sense of being will keep him uh, safe from those 15Ks and will allow him to mitigate some of what this uh, fist is doing <laughs> to his leader. But just can't get anything going. 
Oh, his, his Omafubo is going to take care of it. And he's going to get his uh, Dragon Fist back very soon. So, not completely out of it yet. Um, just an uphill battle, that's all. So, we're going to see if he's, uh, Gabriel is able to come back here. Um, nothing's over until it's over. So. And, and you can see Jonathan Rodriguez has taken a little bit of a more aggressive approach. He sees that Gabriel has a low amount of uh, cards in hand. So normally, you don't want to aggressively invest a combo into a sensor beam, but he sees this as a position of power where I'm going to force cards out of you even if it's uh, in, in terms of net amount of cards, it's a little bit negative for me. It, what's more important is for him to you know, get the game over with in this exact turn when, when he's ahead, when he knows that Gabriel might not get another turn and he just sees himself in the position where he wants to close out and that's why maybe he's being a little aggressive with these uh, additional combos just an interesting really seeing him adapt to what is going on in the game itself Yeah, Mafuba does get around barrier. That's why that card is <laughs> so powerful. One of the key right interactions now. coming out of the sideboard, Mafuba changes the matchup uh, dynamically. I mean, not having the safety that your Dragon Fists are going to untap every single turn makes uh, the matchup a, a lot grindier, a lot uh, almost unintuitive in a way because playing around Mafuba is so difficult. Um, and you, you saw. Uh, last match, one of the only ways is to do it is with the Shroud of Mystery Fu, uh, making people lean toward that uh, kind of a strategy. But right now, just seeing Mafuba in full effect on both both sides of the table, so incredible defensive cards. Almost 200 people watching us here Jeez. at midnight. We're, we're so proud to bring you this content. So happy yeah, man, you guys it's are here late. joining us. It's and late. We're just happy to be showing you the finals here. And glad to have you on board. Almost hitting 12 hours, too. We're four minutes away mm -hmm. from 12 hours stream. Phenomenal. Piccolo is going to unbreakable. It's going to bean. It's gonna unbreakable again. It's gonna piccolo. Jeez, how much can he get up to? And I don't think Gabe has enough combo power in his hand here. This might be over. Is this double striker? Yeah, it's a, yeah, it's a double striker banisher foo. So draws raging Gohan. He has a lot of one ks in hand. Three energy. So. Yeah, that's three, four one ks. Does he have four one ks? Is that all he has in hand? Mm. Uh, yeah, uh, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 75 versus Gabe's, uh, 25, 35, 45, 55, 65, yeah, 65. And yep, it? and it's over, guys. Jonathan Rodriguez takes two back-to-back -back huge PPG tournaments. Uh, not an easy feat, guys. Uh, beating the likes of Alejandro Mena, Peter Catani, uh, a lot of the best Dragon Ball players in Florida, one of the top states in the world for Dragon Ball Super. You have 90% of the Dragon Ball champions from this state, so um, nothing to be taken lightly. Jonathan Rodriguez is a force, um, somebody who single-handedly shaped the meta. PPG, enthusiast, local, grinder. Hard work pays off, guys. And these two gentlemen are not anything special. They've just adapted, worked hard, and had a lot of good tools around them to learn. So... Uh, props to them for always being open-minded and listening to those around, analyzing the game, analyzing the mechanics, and just having so much success in this game. So, huge shout-out to them. Huge shout-out to finally getting over 200 viewers. Uh, we hit it at 204. Huge shout-out to getting over $1,000 uh, goal on Patreon. Couldn't have done it without you guys. Super humbled, super blessed.